They went out into the Mount of Olives, and Jesus said unto them, All ye shall be offended of me this night, for it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered abroad. But after I am risen again, I will go before you into Galilee. Peter again, you know, always got an answer. Peter said, Though all men forsake thee, I will not do it. Verse 35, Peter said unto him, Though I should die with thee, yet I will not deny thee. Uh, verse 37, he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then said he unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful even unto a death. Now, would these smart boys that say there's no sorrow and hardship, would they accuse Jesus of lacking faith? If everything comes in answer to faith, he says he could, end, he could do nothing in one city because of their unbelief. Now, why didn't Jesus overmaster their unbelief with his faith? You can think about that for a, a while after. Then said he unto them, My soul, verse 38, is exceeding sorrowful even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. And he went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed, Father, saying, and prayed, saying, O oh, my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. Middle of verse 40, he saith to Peter, Could ye not watch with me? Because he came and found them asleep. Verse 42, he went away again the second time and prayed, saying, O my father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. And he found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. And he left them and went away again and prayed the third time, saying the same words. Then he cometh to his disciples and saith unto them, Sleep on now and take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Now look, between that and the next verse, there's possibly hours. But notice the infinite mercy of Jesus. They failed him once, twice, three times. In his darkest hour. And yet verse 46 says, let, Rise, let us be going. Behold, he is at hand that betrayeth me. So Jesus waited patiently while they slept in the most critical hour of his life. Uh, you may not agree with me, that's all right. But I believe that's exactly what the church is doing now in the most critical hour since she was founded. She's sleeping and therefore failing a Lord in this most critical of all critical hours in history. These are the very men who one day came to Jesus, and as I've said, and not facetiously, they didn't say, Lord, teach us to sing. They didn't say, Lord, teach us to preach, though he was a master preacher. Think of the Sermon on the Mount. They didn't say, Lord, teach us to heal the sick. They came and they said, Lord, teach us to pray. In other words, we've heard John that they were kind of suggesting, John doesn't touch the heights that you touch. Now, it's amazing there is no record in the Scripture of Jesus ever praying with his disciples. He prayed for them, but I don't know that he prayed with them. It's like Dr. Tozer going to church. When, when he went to church to the prayer meeting, nobody dared pray because they were afraid it would look so bad. And then he would pray, and after he prayed, nobody dared pray. Because he prayed, not just with a vocabulary that was more expressive, but he prayed in, in a dimension, in a depth, in a height, that left everybody floundering. You know, waters to the ankles. We're only just in this business. And, and I, I, I think this is the most awesome thing ever that Jesus did, apart from the cross. 